What's up, everybody? Thank you once again for joining us on Titletown, South Florida, the Miami Herald's high school sports show. I'm Andre Fernandez, deputy sports editor at the Miami Herald, joined once again by sports writer David Wilson. David, we were both on the road last week, different reasons. Uh, how, how was your trip? Uh, you know, it was pretty good. Um, out in uh, out on the West Coast, for we were both on the West Coast at various points in the last week's yeah. Dolphins games. Um, two not very good performances from the Dolphins, but... Um, you know, always good to get out to the West Coast a little bit. The, the whole sports thing there is weird to me. We're like, it's like 9 p.m. and all of a sudden, like, there's nothing left to watch on TV. I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm used to be, I'm used to like having the TV on, even if I'm like only half paying attention to it until like yeah. 1 a.m. basically every night with just I, uh, different basketball games on or whatever. Yeah, I was on, I was in LA for the Dolphins Chargers. And yeah, I, I hear you because it was 6 a.m. I, I, I hadn't even gotten out of bed. I just woke up and the NFL Network pregame show was already on and starting. <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing. But uh, yeah, but speaking of more successful football, we're going to talk about the high school football state championships. We're going to talk a little bit about Chaminade's dominant win over Clearwater Central Catholic. They, they set the tone for South Florida, the uh, dominant win. Uh, a spectacular catch in that game that we'll take a look at uh, uh, by Jeremiah Smith, kind of the Odell Beckham-esque reaching back and bringing that one in. Uh, Shamanat all over them, and now looking ahead to a national championship, uh, they hope, uh, potential game out in uh, Las Vegas against the, the powerhouse, very familiar to South Florida teams uh, in Bishop Gorman. They'll be heading to Vegas this week, and we'll have more on that. We'll also have some interviews that both uh, you, David, and Jordan McPherson are, are – our co-worker and good friend had uh, this past week talking to some of the central figures that will play a big role in these state finals that are coming up this week. And of course, signing day that's coming up the week after on December 21st. Uh, we'll be talking. Uh, David spoke to Ruben Bain and Jordan spoke to Mark Fletcher uh, ahead of this, uh, ahead of both of these occasions, as obviously these are two huge things to wrap up the year. We want to remind everyone uh, that our all-county teams are about to start uh, releasing this week in the Miami Herald. We'll have them in the print edition of Thursday, but also online. We're going to be doing it a little differently this year. They're going to be released sport by sport instead of in one big section like we used to for all these years. So be sure to check that out. We'll also recognize some of the top performances in basketball, soccer, and uh, wrestling this week that uh, in our Player of the Week polls as we continue to do those. And reminder, the winter season, obviously, uh, coming up and and in full swing pretty soon as soon as football is over and uh, to not forget we keep talking about these all South Florida showdowns this week but Columbus taking on a pop as they try to win their second ever state title we'll take a look at the Explorers as well remember in addition to watching the show as you are right now we now have it as a pod available wherever you look wherever you listen to your podcast Spotify iTunes you name it all the all the major platforms it is available now there and will be um, as of Tuesday late uh, afternoon as well. So let's get right to it and start things off in Tallahassee where the Chaminade Lions went up there, didn't waste any time, right from the right from the get-go, first drive, went right down the field and started to, to absolutely route Clearwater Central Catholic on their way to their fifth state title in six years. What a job Coach Damian Jones and these guys have done over the seven years they've been there to win those many that, that many titles. Now Chaminade has seven overall which puts them just behind, obviously, not just behind, way behind St. Thomas Aquinas, which has the state record, but they're the second highest championship winning team in Broward. Here's the ease at which the passing game had it going early on. Let's look at this one from Cedric Bailey to Edwin Joseph. That one wasn't a touchdown, but it did set up this score for Davion Goss, who had a great night, 186 yards on 14 carries. Here's his first score. After a few minutes, it was pretty clear who the best team was, but here's that catch we were talking about. I, I didn't probably get the best angle, but we'll show you the photo there in a little bit as well. But here's the clip of Jeremiah Smith making that touchdown grab. I love the part where he says, are you kidding me on the sideline? Are you and kidding he's like, me? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was like the perfect reaction to get there. And uh, if you can, I don't know if we could cue up a picture of that big uh, moment right there. But uh, 
look at those, the way that he's able to bring down this ball. Props to our photographer, Alicia Devine, who uh, works for the Tallahassee Democrat. She dropped that in there for us. And, um, you know, talking about Smith's big day, uh, uh, you know, he six catches over 100 yards comes through in the clutch. And, and it was just the highlight of just the great season that these Chaminade receivers had all year. And here's the clip of Jeremiah Smith. It's the game at State last year, too, man. I mean, like, you just getting used to this or what? Yeah, I'm used to, I mean, not, I'm not taking the color, but, yeah, I mean, this, I, I mean, I really do, I mean, I do this, but, I mean, because, I mean, I put in a lot of work. I mean, all of them put a lot of work in the spring, in the summer, in the summer workouts, all the guys, all of them running the and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it all paid off. I mean, I really thought this year, we took a lot of work. Talk about um, just your offense, especially in the first half. You guys were scoring so quick. Yeah, I mean, our offense is close, so, I mean, we go, we go quick, I mean. I mean, we got a part of the best offense. I mean, we do have the best offense in the state and the whole country, obviously, for sure. Why, why did that wide receiver room click all season the way you guys do? Why did I talk about that a little bit? I mean, bit? We, all, we push each other each and every day. That's all I can say. Um, we competitive. I mean, we go out of the practice. We push each other. We push the young guys. They try to push us. I mean, we go out each and every day How many times do you guys make a one-handed catch like that in we practice? Do, we, we practice? We practice that all day. Like, one-handed. We can do it better. Still like, so, yeah, we go out of every day in practice. So you weren't surprised where you could do that in the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. so, so how, how did you make it consistent week in, week out, even though the pressure was on you to, to go and defeat it? I mean, I, mean uh, I really just prepare and practice. I mean, just put just work hard and practice. That's all. That's all I really do is work hard each and every day. So I can't really say that's all I really do is work hard and practice. Even though it was a route uh, overshadowed a little bit was the performance by the Chaminade defense, though. They had like three stops in, in their own territory and a couple of them inside their own five. And here's one of them, a uh, big play the Chaminade made. And from that point on, we talked about Davion Goss and what he was able to do. Here's his second touchdown. And as deep as Shamanon was, one kid that I caught my attention that I was able, I was glad I was able to write about a little bit was Dwayne Thomas Jr. He's been a vital part of their run for the past two years. Even Speedy got in on the action. Here's the touchdown he got at the end of the game. But here, here's here's Cedric Bailey talking a little bit about the season. And, and I think Cedric Bailey, I mean, sometimes we get it, – it's almost like we take him a little bit for granted just because of all the arsenal he's had. We've talked about that over the course of the season. But this kid is going to keep improving. And with the size he's got, I think it's going to be interesting to see what kind of jump he makes at the, at the next level. Here's Cedric Bailey talking about the win. The rhythm you guys had from the start. Yeah. How, what was the key to that? Um, the key was to set the tone. You know, we had a good game plan coming in all week. Um, all we want to do is to set the tone for our boys. We needed that energy. We needed that spark, and we did it. Yeah. So. I mean, when you see it, your guy get a one-handed catch yeah, in the yeah. end zone. I mean, yeah. you've seen him probably do it before, yeah. but in a state championship. All the time in practice, that's all they do. They practice their one-handed catches, and they finally came up in the state game. They're outstanding players. He's an outstanding player. Man, we did this. We did this. We won the state. This is what we, this is what we wanted to do. This is what we um, have a dream of. So. What was the key to keep it consistent the whole year the way you did? Um, the key was to keep a, a straight and level mindset, never get too high, never get too low. You know, all we had to do was just come in, battle every practice. We battle each other, we beat up on each other too much. So now we finally get a, a good opponent, finally made it to states, and we did what we had to do. What makes Jeremiah Smith so special? Oh, he's great everywhere. Um, great route running, great hands, great everything, great mentality. Um, in the school, he's perfect. He's a great kid. I feel like he's the one to go be one of us, one of us to make it. So. And now it's on the Vegas. Vegas, baby, as uh, Chaminade takes on Bishop Gorman. What do you think of this matchup, Dave? This is going to be, I think, one of the better matchups that the Bowl Series has had. Usually they match yeah. them up against known programs, but a top five game like this, you don't see that too often. This is going to be a great game. Yeah, I mean, it could be the game of the year. Uh, you know, it's a lot of competition, right? I mean, we had uh, what Bosco and Modern Day played in a, uh, a state champ or you know, both both have had really tough schedules. Obviously, Central Heritage, we've talked about a potential game of the year state championship on the line this weekend. 
Um, but I mean, Shamanad Gorman, that is, you know, like you said, two of the top five programs in the country. If Shamanad wins this game, uh, they're number five in the national rankings right now. Um, you know, someone will probably hand them uh, a national championship and, uh, it's, you know, going on the road is, is going to be tough. Um, but you know, if you're looking just for sheer like level of future Division One and, and NFL stars, you're going to be hard pressed to find a game with more talent, probably all year that, than there will be in this game. Yeah, just looking at the Gorman side here. I mean, on offense, uh, Zachariah Branch, uh, you know, ranked number five overall in the nation yeah. by 24/7. USC commit. They've got their corners are it, it's a who's who of, of kids going to the SEC from Justin Rett, who's committed to Georgia. Jeremiah Hughes going to LSU. They got a kid going to Oregon, Cody DeCambra. You know, I, I mean, it's this is going to be a challenge. And up front, uh, Zach Yamauchi going to Stanford and on the offensive line, their quarterback mm -hmm. Mike uh, Alejado has thrown fifty three TDs and only two interceptions. They have a they always have a potent offense over there. But this is going to really test, I think, Shamanad on both sides of the ball, probably more than they have been all year by anybody. Yeah, I, I mean, I think certainly they've, you know, they've played a really, really good schedule. But at the same time, you know, I, their, their toughest competition all year has probably been Heritage. This, you know, they, yeah. they didn't play Central, um, didn't play St. Thomas, obviously. You know, those are, I, I think we thought all year, those are the top three teams in South Florida. Um, so, yeah, this is that that next level uh, opponent. Obviously, American Heritage is really good, number 10 in the country, but, you know, they're, they're – we think, you know, we'll see what Heritage does this weekend. Maybe, maybe it turns out we've been underrating them a little bit all year long uh, compared to the, the three that we've kind of, I think, honed in on as the top three in the area. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, this this is just the, the level of talent. It's going to be a, a jump this week, I think. And, again, the American Heritage is a team that has probably multiple future NFL players on it. But, um, it's you know, Gorman is similar to, like, a St. Thomas uh, or Chaminade this year or mm -hmm. IMG where it's just they come at you in waves, right? They have – uh, their their benches their their reserves are, are probably Division One guys like that right. they're 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 a factory out there in the same way that St Thomas is down here. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I, I'm really glad that game is at four because on Saturday because yeah, we'll be able to check it out. Chance, <laughs> yeah, it was a chance to watch in the press box. But uh, but yeah, so, tra let's let's on that note, let's transition to the state finals and start our our look ahead to the final week of the season. And uh, big news, obviously, from our uh, one of our writers, Walter Villa, who spoke to Coach Philip Simpson at Homestead. This is going to be it for Coach Simpson at Homestead this week, win or lose, as he has accepted a job. Or uh, I'm sure if he finally signed the paperwork yet, but it's not, but he said that he's off to the University of Nebraska to be an assistant coach there. Congratulations to him. That's a great opportunity, a rebuilding program with a lot of history there. But if they can get going. Uh, anytime you get a college job and just the job that he's done uh coach simpson at homestead to turn them into what they are today i mean they hadn't even made the semifinals as we spoke about before since 1984 this is the mm -hmm. first state final i mean aquinas has been blowing people out left and right and we know unfortunately they're gonna have to go through each other and that's gonna leave someone out in the cold without a state title that probably deserves one but can Homestead really, I mean, what, what do you think in this matchup? Can Homestead hang? I mean, I know, like you said right now, up front to me is the key. Because yeah. Aquinas hits you with so much size. Yeah, that is going to be the challenge. We talked about it last, or two weeks ago, um, when we talked to to Larry about the matchup with Jones. And my concern was I really like the Homestead defensive line. They're a little small. Um, we mm -hmm. were concerned about what they were going to do against Jones. And obviously they they held their own and, and pulled out a win up there. Um, biggest win in program history. So, yeah, I think once again, it kind of comes down to that. I think, you know, I kind of think Homestead's going to be able to score with them, right? They, they, it seems like they've unleashed Isaac Brown a little bit. Some of the guys that all year long were like, you know, what, what's up with the, like, are they going to use all these weapons? Are they saving them for the playoffs? Seems like they might be doing that a little bit. I think they're going to be able to score with them. Uh, they might have the edge at quarterback in this game, although those are two probably all county quarterbacks on both sides of the field. Um, but, yeah, I, I do worry a little bit about how they're going to how their defensive line is going to handle Aquinas's size up front. Right. I mean, I, I think on, on both sides of the ball, that defensive front too. I mean, the way that they're able to pressure the quarterback, all those guys. It, like we said, we don't have, they don't really have the Nick Bosa type. Yeah. You know, standout. You know, maybe Dallas Turner guys like that, but they are collectively really good and have turned it up a notch in the playoffs. You were you went down to St. Thomas on Monday. You were able to talk to them a little bit. And here's an interview that David had with Conrad Hussey, one of their defensive backs uh, that's committed to Penn State. 
signing day coming up, state championship coming up on, on Thursday. Well, what's this time of the year like for you guys? Uh, it's it's the time of the year where we truly lock in. This is where we're showing our full potential at, so we're going to come with everything we got Thursday. Uh, defensively, I mean, you guys obviously had kind of a lot of turnover, not not necessarily on defense as much. On offense, obviously, new quarterback. You, know, you guys had the dynamic duo there for a couple of years. Uh, the defense's responsibility this year. Obviously, you guys have a great defense every year. What, what did you guys, did you guys kind of take on a responsibility this year to to anchor this group through some change? I mean, yes, we did, but you know, it's always a, a team effort, offense and defense. It's a three-part effort, offense, defense, and special teams, so we all took accountability in our efforts. Um, what, what do you like about this group on defense? I just particular? love how we never quit. We always gonna, if we make a mistake, we're going to get on each other and get right back up, so there's no quitting on the team. Uh, you and, and King make up, I think, in a lot of people's mind, one of the best safety tandems in the country. Uh, what, what, what makes you guys such a good like? Like, what, what's the chemistry like between you guys? How do you guys uh, work so well together? Uh, we talk every play. We study in and out during practice, outside of practice, so we just make sure our chemistry stays the same. You guys have been playing together back there for for a while too, right? Yeah, so, uh, since last year. Yes, and so how how did that? You know, just coming year two, obviously, you guys playing together. How did that help? Um, uh, it helped a lot, really, because we had to focus on our technique a lot more last year. And this, this year, too, we worked on our technique even more, so we had to lock in and stay focused on who we was playing every time. Uh, on a defense like you know St. Thomas Aquinas, where you've got so many kind of star-level guys, it, it can be easy to you know not mention everyone. Who, who are some of the guys on, on this side of the ball that you think maybe haven't gotten uh, kind of the, the same recognition? Like, who, who were kind of some of the underrated key pieces for you guys on that side um, of the ball? Rashad, Rashad Henry, uh, middle linebacker, definitely. Uh, Devin, um, mainly a lot, I ain't gonna lie, there's a lot of unspoken about people on our team that didn't get a lot of recognition this mm -hmm. year, which is kind of sad. But oh, also Isaiah Harge, Okimari Robinson too, that's the other side yeah. corner. Um, Cameron, Ju uh, Justin Fitz. There's actually a lot of names. I ain't gonna lie. There's a lot of names. <laughs> well, that's the problem in St. Like, Thomas Aquinas, right? Names. There's too many good right. ones. Yeah. Um, for, for you guys, obviously, it would be uh, you know four state championships in a row, um, and that's a, a big accomplishment. Um, is that any something you guys have talked about throughout the year, or at any point, or has it always been just a day by day approach for you guys? Day by day, one day at a time, one day at a time. Yeah, when you come in and you have a hundred guys on the sideline. Like a power, like a power five school. <laughs> I mean, that's that's intimidating enough for a lot of teams. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Homestead's going to be intimidated though because no, they face so this. Yeah, it's not going to be a mental thing. I think it's just more of the physicality and, and can they can they hang with them and and more than anything, it's, can you play four quarters again? Can you them, play four right? quarters? And um, it's like and it's like when they beat Northwestern. Play, right, teams that can play four quarters. Uh, usually, it's different when you play against St. Thomas, where again, like. You know, they have three running – like, you show up on any given day and a different running back is their star, right? Like, right. they've got three running backs, all of whom – you know, two going to FAU, one is a junior and probably will – you know, he'll definitely be going somewhere, could be going somewhere big. Like, they can – they can – sometimes, like, the bet, the guy who leads the team in rushing won't get his first touch until the second half, right? Like, they're that kind of team. Um, and that, that makes it tough because you think you, you're ready to play four quarters, but they're basically got, like, a second team that can come in in the second half. And – all of a sudden you're you're playing against another set of ones that hasn't you know that's totally fresh right yeah i mean turnovers too because that yeah. flip i remember the northwestern game again i go back to that one six turnovers that flipped it completely and they dominated that because of it if they can if they can catch some breaks i think but especially it's protect the football and don't give aquinas short fields and that sort of thing and don't don't basically put yourself out of the game in the first or second quarter where you don't give yourself a chance um, and a lot of that can apply to our next matchup we want to talk about. That's the Class 4M final between Columbus and Apopka because seeing Apopka over the years, this is not a team very familiar that we have very familiar with from seeing them come down and play both Dade and Broward teams. I mean, they have a long history. They've played in the past. They Going way back, they played uh, Northwestern back in 2001 in the state final, back when Brandon Merriweather was on that team and, you know, former Kane. Uh, but even more recently, they beat Cypress Bay one year, controversial finish, but who could forget that 53-50 to 50 final that they had up there. And then Columbus now, very familiar with them. This is going to be the third time since 2014 that they have faced Columbus in the final. They've split the two meetings. They won the first one, and then Columbus in that dramatic finish won their first ever state championship in 2019. But again, pounding the football, that you know, all the different running backs, the, they're big up front like usual. They have, I mean, this is going to be a discipline dictated uh, game for that Columbus defense. Basically, mm -hmm. you know, 
can't let one of these big plays pop through and, and you know, the gap discipline, that sort of thing. And, and they've been pretty good at that, but they have been a little vulnerable lately. The, the Okoe game, they gave up a lot of points to a, to a similar team that like to run a lot of those RPOs, that sort of thing. And that's going to be the key. Can they avoid getting into a shootout where you're trading scores and, and making those kinds of mistakes early? And then we'll see if Columbus can, can do that. I think they have all the ingredients to win it all. What do you think of this match? Yeah, I, I think this might be the game of the weekend. Um, you know, obviously Central Heritage. That's saying something. Yeah. Central Heritage <laughs> might be the game, but I just think in terms of like two – evenly matched teams and the fact that a pop could run such a strange, you know, an offense that teams don't, you know, this probably, uh, I guess uh, Columbus played Doral, which is, you know, similar in that, um, you know, unorth, you know, old school kind of rushing style, but like, you don't see a, a I, that game actually, now that I think about it, probably would, probably, I'm sure they're talking about it a little bit this week um, and planning a little similarly, but it's, you know, such a unique uh, test um, that Columbus, which probably on paper has more talent. Um, I, I think it's kind of like an equalizer there. Um, I think, you know, like you said, Columbus has the ingredients defensively. They got, you know, one of the best defensive lines in the entire state uh, with TJ Caper, Dylan Stevenson, Dylan Russell. Um, like those guys, obviously, Apopka is always huge up front. They play a bunch of tight ends at the same time. I remember seeing them in the state championship a couple years ago. They had Jalen Carter. Uh, might be the number one pick in the NFL draft as a as a defensive lineman playing tight end, um, like that. That's what they, that's the kind of team they are. They're a real challenge. Um, I think Columbus is you know they've had some slow first halves in these games, but I think their offense is going to be able to do enough. I think it's like you said, it's going to come down to the defense and whether they can handle that unique challenge that Apopka poses. Yeah, this is where I wonder um, with Capers being out because uh, Capers. Hurt him that got hurt in the Palmetto game and he's out for the season. So I don't know if, and I yep. wonder if that was why maybe they were a little more vulnerable against Okoe mm-hmm. in the state semifinals. I guess, or was it a fluke? I guess we'll find out now, right? Because uh, a pop different running backs. I mean, Malachi Davey, Kevin Call, kid going to UCF, Rashad Watson. I mean, they hit, like I said before, they hit you with a bunch of different running backs. They've run for over 2,600 yards this year collectively, and up front. It's another sizable line. Their tackle, the pit commit, Ty Ray, is one of the better ones in the, in the state. And, again, it, it's going to come down to, like you said, if, if they don't let it kind of get out of hand in the first half and have a chance because you're right, they, every game, I mean, this is going back to the beginning of the season, they seem to kind of ease their way into this and then turn it up a notch by halftime. Mm-hmm. But they can't bury themselves because they almost did yeah. against the Coey. That there, there was one play a kid dropped a pick six that would have made it 31 13 going the other way. If that had happened, we wouldn't be talking about Columbus this week, I guarantee you. So, yeah, I mean, they did against Central too, right? Like maybe they yeah. win that game if, if they're not down 35 to 7 at halftime or whatever right. it was. No, yeah. obviously, Central is a different monster than, than a Popka, but still, um, like you said, that that's the key for them. Yeah, this is Doral with uh, with a lot more options, a lot more weapons, basically. So. Yeah, and you know, like no no disrespect to Doral, which was has been one of the best stories in South Florida over the last couple of years. Um, the the shift to their offense and the success they've had, but you know, Popka has they're they're always sending guys D one. They're always sending guys to the NFL. Um, it, it's yeah, you know, it's, it's it's kind of like Doral on steroids a little bit. Right, okay. not literally, I, I, but yes. No, <laughs> I think that's why. I, like them with them with much better toys. Let's put yeah, it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so then let's go to the big one, which is another top ten national, yeah. nationally ranked matchup here between Central and American Heritage. As we said before, we, we we had this one penciled in. I think all of us did since the beginning, since we kind of saw the way the bracket would would uh, shake up. And before we get to any of that, let's. Uh, Let's hear from Mark Fletcher, who's had a tremendous season. He is a Broward County MVP potential this year, the way he's been able to run the football, the Ohio, the former Ohio State commit, who has uh, become an interesting topic going into signing day as to where he's going to go. Our Jordan McPherson talked to him after they won their state semifinal. Here's the clip. Yeah, so, guys, back in state, how's that feel? All the hard work we put in, but hey, we're not done yet. we got to keep playing here this football, but it feel good to be back, but. No one feel as much as good until we finish it. Yeah, and for it to be against Central, obviously, we, game we, flashes. We, we wouldn't want anybody else to It had to be them. Just, God set this up for a reason. And so we just got to finish the drill. Yeah, how tough was that last year to follow them and know that you had to wait for, for the chance? You got it now. That's, a, that's all it is now. That's, that's what it was. You got it now. So everybody get their popcorn ready. It's going to be a show. And for you, two touchdowns today, 
a lot of big runs, especially that third, that first drive to open the second half to eat a lot of clock. How did you feel out there today? And just this, do you feel yourself still continuing to grow as the yes, season's getting nah, to the end? To be honest, this is crazy. I think this is like the game is really just slowing down for me. You know, it's crazy. I can only get better. So. You know, if I keep having guys up front, when my guys up front know what they're doing, they just make my job easy. So yeah. that's how they do. Yeah, and just the senior group got 20 some of you guys. <laughs> just Yeah, <laughs> just knowing how much is mean for you guys, knowing that each game could be your last. Just how you how have you seen the camaraderie from the group we grow? All, especially we all from, together from practice, from the way we handle each other on the weekends. You know, we just all know how important it is to us. And, you know, we can't go out like that. Every game we play it like it is our last, and it is. So we all just chipped in together. And I know Coach talked about toward the end of your as hell, but Blake, with everything he went through the last couple of years with the injuries, now to be where he is, yes. what has it been like watching him as a teammate grow on the field and gain the confidence that he's gained? He's one, one of the strongest person, like people I know. Like that boy, he had every reason to quit, every reason to just stop, and he doesn't. And he motivates all of us. So you know, we trust in seven. Yeah, and during the interview, obviously, all the attention, a lot of the attention goes to you, the brain, and to a couple guys in the events. But for him, to, how important is Blake to this team? There's no American Heritage without Blake Murphy. Simple. I don't know what we'll do without him. He's just so, so, so smart. You know, half of the players that we score on, he calls them. <laughs> to be honest, because, you know, he, he sees something he don't like. He's just very intelligent. He's just a playmaker, and I don't know what we'll do without him. Seriously. It'd be hard. <laughs> yeah. How long are these next two weeks in the field until you get on the field against Central? <laughs> Patiently waiting. We waiting. We waiting. We can't wait to get out there. Yeah. Thanks, my champ. Congrats. Be safe. You too. We are we are down to three days now. And yeah. I'm sure they've been. Uh, I'm sure they've been itching to play this game. Uh, what what do you? I, I know we've echoed this over and over, but again, what a year for quarterbacks because Blake yeah. Murphy steps up again. We're gonna see a lot of good ones: Mendoza this weekend, Keon Jenkins, you know, Joshua Townsend. That that quote from him about how oh, there's no heritage without Blake Murphy it reminds me of the same one Philip Simpson likes to say about Joshua Townsend that, that without him there's no there's no team, there's no homestead. And uh, you know, I, I, this this game, I I really just can't wait to see the, this clash of of strengths on each side of the ball. What do you think just going into this? Yeah, the quarterback matchup, I think, is the key one here. Um, you know, Kiwan Jenkins has been the best quarterback and, you know, one of the most accomplished quarterbacks to come through South Florida in a long time. Um, Blake Murphy, I think, kind of flew under the radar coming into the year just because he was coming off that injury. Um, we hadn't seen what this offense was going to look like with him. I think – you know, obviously they they love to pound the ball and, and Mark Fletcher is is the engine of everything they do. But um Murphy, I think is really you know, he's been really impressive whenever I've seen him in these last couple of weeks. Um, I think he's gonna have to make some big plays because I, I don't think you can be one dimensional against Central. Um if he can go toe to toe with with Kwan Jenkins and and maybe even outplay him, then I think uh Heritage has a shot to pull off the upset here. But yeah, I mean either way this is you know there's Again, like you said, national top 10 matchup on paper. Certainly uh, the game of this weekend um, could be a little bit of a shootout. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I know Central Central loves the way their offense is rolling right now, but it's it's been a, a deep – the defense has had some ups and downs this year. Obviously some really high-level star talents with like Ruben Bain and Stan Quan Clark, um, some good DBs, but but a lot of young guys out there too. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a high-scoring game. Um, I just think it's – you know, it's – Central, again, it's similar to some of these other teams you talk about. They just kind of come at you in waves. Um, and I think their offense, I mean, I saw them play against Lakewood, and their offense is, like, really humming right now. Yeah, especially because the running game, I think, too, has been important. Because yeah. at the beginning of the season, they ran the ball, but not the way they have the last few games. That's that, That's that been a good balance for them now. Yeah. But, yeah, if there's one surprise result, and, and, and it would be – not a massive surprise, but a little bit of uh, I think we're all thinking Central's at least the the, the favorite, not an yeah. overwhelming favorite, but the favorite. It could be this game. But uh, let's take a look uh, real quick. We're going to do a couple shout outs here to some of our uh, candidates for player of the week, both in Dade and Broward. Uh, we'll start with Broward and uh, Jeremiah Smith, who we mentioned before. As we said, six catches, 104 yards, the acrobatic one that he made leading Shaman to the state title. He's one of them. Ryder Lewin, the quarterback from Cypress Bay, 
scored a touchdown, and directed the game-winning 80-yard drive in the BCAA All-Star football game. Ended up being the the winning drive to beat to, uh, for the South All-Stars to beat the North All-Stars in that game. So he's one of them. On the soccer field, we have a couple of the of, of the top girls standouts on the, for the Pines Charter soccer team. Marissa Martin had two goals to lead them to a to a thrilling comeback win over Western. Francesca Duran has been key for Archbishop McCarthy. We know they're a big powerhouse so, uh, more often than not in Broward County. She scored a goal in two big wins over Palmetto and South Florida Heat. And Jamar Preville, the in, in on the boys' basketball court, had a solid game: thirteen points, nine rebounds, six steals, and a win over Pompano. The Paladins are off to a 7-1 and one start. So looking at a few of the stars from the winter sports season that has begun. On the date side, Sky Carrizo of Coral Gables in a 5 nothing win had four goals in that game. Coral Gables soccer always usually pretty good. Luciana Picasso, 15 points, 14 rebounds, six assists, four steals, and two blocks as Lourdes beat Northwestern. Corey Cotton, this is a name that we're probably going to hear a lot from at Southridge once basketball season continues to get a little closer to the postseason. He's one of the best players in town. They had a, a key 54-50 win over Norland, and he was a big part of that with 13 points and eight rebounds. Westwood Christian, who has had some success over the years on the small school level, Gabriel Gallego, 30 points, 11 rebounds in a game this week against downtown Doral, and then 12 points, seven assists in a game, and six steals as well in a game in a win over Homestead. And uh, uh, another one of these staggering score numbers by Adina Webster at Archbishop Carroll, 51 points, 14 rebounds, 15 steals, against Colonial Christian. Those are all our Player of the Week candidates this week. Reminder to vote on those polls. It's free. It's not behind the paywall, and you can vote as many times as you want at MiamiHerald.com. You can find the polls there. And also, if you're watching this show, I'm sure you can find it. Uh, click to the link of this story later on today, later on on Tuesday as well. But finally, it's time. we got to put ourselves here and, and, and say who our picks are for this week for the four games. Let's start with that Sham. Let's start with that big one at, in Vegas with Shamanad and Bishop Gorman. Does Shamanad complete the perfect season and potentially put themselves in position for a national title? What do you think, Dave? What am I gonna do? Pick against Shamanad? Like, <laughs> come on. Like I at mean, this, this point, is, this is gonna be like I said, maybe the game of the year. Um, on paper, certainly, like I said, the talent on both sides is is unmatched. But I don't know, I'm just not. I'm not doubting Shamanad. I'm really not doubting any of our teams at this point. They've all they've all been so impressive. Um, they're all teams that I think, you know, we're like, shouldn't Chaminade be the national champion? Shouldn't Central be the national champion? Shouldn't Columbus be a state champion? Like, we've seen these teams all year long. Obviously, we're a little biased, but, like, I have a hard time that any anyone can slow down that Chaminade offense. We we just haven't seen it for a moment all year, right? They haven't had, like, a bad moment. That That's the thing for them. Yeah, I, I do think this is going to be their toughest opponent, especially oh, the, 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 the road travel. You're coming off the high of winning the state title last week, all of that, all those factors. But – I have seen teams go out to Bishop Gorman before, handle the pressure, and come out on top, even if it is an adventure, even if it is a close game. Booker T did that. Yep. St. Thomas did that. This is going to be no different. I'm with you. I think it's going to be a great game. Come down, Maybe come down to the last drive, but Chaminade finds a way and, and pulls it off and, and, and kind of shows the pollsters, hey, I know everyone likes the California teams, and, and in this case, the, the big Vegas powerhouse, but – the talent here is second to none, and the, and the coaching deserves a nod too because sometimes I think they don't get spoken of enough as mm -hmm. well as we know. Uh, well, now going back to Fort, going back home to Fort Lauderdale, uh, let's start with that four, and we're going we're to leave the all South Florida games last uh, okay. here. But the first one, Columbus and Apopka. You know, Columbus it has been a little dicey, like we talked about before the last couple of weeks, but can they pull this off? And can they beat Apopka and and win their second championship because they're they're a regular to make the finals over the years, but they have rarely been able to win it. Even the one they did win was on a miracle play almost at the end. So can they pull this off and win this? Yeah, rematch of that game, obviously. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Columbus. Like I said, I think this is maybe going to be the most competitive game of the week. Like, And maybe I'm just thinking of that game from a couple of years back. But like, this feels like one that's going to come down to the last drive. Um, and I I like the way that Columbus has played in the second halves of these games. And in a game that comes down to the last drive, I, I like – Columbus and um, you know their they they their offense has gotten going in the second halves of games. Um, Mendoza has been spectacular usually in the second halves of these games. Jose Leon is, is seems to break a long touchdown every game. I think they're I, I like this one to come down to the wire and for Columbus to pull it out at the end. As long as it you know they they've got to prove they can shut down that Apopka offense early. But if it's close, I like them in the end. 
Yeah, I think so too. And a couple of years ago, I think it was Columbus was a little more of an underdog and yeah. and kind of like you know pulled it off. But this team is just a lot more complete this year, and even from offense, defense, special teams, you name it. And uh, so I, I think we got to they definitely have a chance to to do this. I, I I agree with you. I think this has been um, since the middle of the season. I, I've thought so too. And and now as we transition again to the the all South Florida games. It's Aquinas and Homestead. This one isn't as – some people would say not as evenly matched. I think we'd agree maybe on paper not as evenly matched because of Aquinas' depth. And that's the only reason I think I'm going to go with Aquinas. But I think Homestead will surprise. I think they there's something to the way they've played these last few weeks. I think they'll give themselves a chance, and it won't be a route. But I got to go with the Raiders and their depth here. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I know last week they were really confident going into that Jones game. Um, they play with confidence. That's the thing, right? Like – they're, they're kind they're like in some ways like the one underdog here right I, I mean obviously it's their first time here yeah. um you know it's not like they don't have like high-end talent um you know they have one of the best quarterbacks in south florida um but they're the underdog here and i think they embrace that a little bit um you know, i wonder you know philip simpson his last game as coach you have to think that they are going to be juiced up about that um but it, it's really hard to pick against st thomas aquinas just knowing um you know who they are they're, they're going for four in a row here too like it's yeah. they're they're like i said they've been in a lot of ways like i think the under discussed team in the big three but it's a big three this year um and i i just think the gap in talent and depth and all those kinds of thing numbers resources all those kind of things is is just going to be a little too much for homestead to overcome but they're not going to be scared that's yeah. all about this team and and hopefully just because of Philip Simpson's departure doesn't mean it's the demise of everything they've done at Homestead because we've mm-hmm. seen that in the past where where a team gets this good and then there's a change and then yeah. unfortunately so hopefully they can they're able to sustain but yeah I, I, to me it's all up front I mean the, this Homestead offensive line and defensive lines it's going to depend however how how they play is going to dictate whether they have a chance or not but I, I think they hang a little bit but in the end I got to go with at least with the depth of Aquinas. Now, we get to the top 10 game once again. Before we make our picks, though, we want to hear from Ruben Bain for both reasons, for this championship game and also for a, a big signing uh, day, which uh, apparently from what you've reported, David, he already knows. He just hasn't said yet, but he's going to say this week where he's going to college. It sounds like it's a battle, the old battle between the Hurricanes and the Seminoles for a major recruit, a kid who's going to be a tremendous player at the next level and a great get for whichever side gets him. Let's hear from Ruben Bain from the interview you did with him. 18 or 18 year olds in America right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recruiting, you're trying to figure out when you're going to commit. Uh, got the Nat Moore trophy on, on Tuesday and you've got a state championship with potential national championship implications. Just what have, what has this last two weeks been like for you? Well, it's been hectic, a very eventful two weeks. Really just trying to decide what I can call home in the next month or so. And just trying to focus to get my team straight for the corner that's at hand. And you were at Florida State over the weekend. Now you got a week to focus just on this before you go to Miami visit next weekend. Just uh, are you kind of putting all the recruiting stuff? Like, how, how do you do that this week? Do you kind of compartmentalize it all, try to put it aside, and just focus on uh, American Heritage and the state championship game? Yeah, uh, just to make sure that I, before I was, but now I was committed and did everything behind the scenes. So I just I just be announcing it at uh, either Tuesday night or Wednesday. Okay, so you're pushing things up there. Yeah. Um, what uh, was, did you want to get that out of the way? I know you originally think maybe you were going to commit on, at the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just want to felt like you were ready to make your choice and kind of get it out of the way, basically. Yeah, uh, I decided that it's probably better for me and the actual school to push the commitment up. So that's what we decided to do and uh, try to get me to recruit some other recruits. Uh, help that just help some guys land home. Um, Going, looking out of the, the game this weekend, obviously a lot has been made of the Dade Broward element yeah. to it. Uh, yeah. You know, two national top ten teams. I'm sure you know a lot of the kids on that team. Just what, what is, does that add a different element to this game, a different dimension that it's, you know, probably guys you know on that team, yeah. a little bit of a rivalry in the state championship game. Yeah, definitely because um, they're gonna try to get some type of get back from last year. Uh, how we see it is the Dade versus Broward game, also just the road to the four B. He's just saying that we're not going to lose to anybody from Broadway. We're not going to let somebody stop, stop us from getting the fourth beat. So we coming in with an extra chip, I'm not sure. 
the four P and there's been the talk all year, right? You guys, the national champion, especially if you beat IMG, national champion. Can you go four in a row? You've been a starter on all four of those teams. From the outside, it seems like it could be a lot of pressure. Do, do you guys feel? Have you felt pressure at points this season, or has it been just a game by game? Uh, game by game mindset. Um, if you feel, if you fall into the pressure, and you fall into, and you look down the road. That's when you start losing. So um, we just been going game by game, I'm trying to keep our feet where we at right now. I, I've learned not to pick against Central in big games over the last, uh, going back 12 years now. I think since uh, since the Devonte Freeman and Dalvin Cook days, and I, I don't know. I just I, as good as Heritage is, I've seen too much of that. Clutch time, you know, especially this, the, the, you know, Ruben Bain is one of those players. And, and yeah, we saw, it, we saw it in the Columbus game when it looked like everything was going wrong. And all of a sudden he stopped the bleeding. Him and Stan Quan Clark both stopped the bleeding there at the end. I mean, that could happen again in this game. That could be something, maybe not the 35 7 comeback, but I'm saying something where a clutch play is needed late and one of those guys makes it. it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised at all. What do you think? Yeah, we talk a lot about teams that can play four quarters. And, um, you know, Heritage is uh, – I think they still kind of feel like they've got a better performance in them than they've had all year, right? You, you know, obviously they, they struggled to put away bowls uh, last week. A um, couple of weeks – you know, they played Cardinal Gibbons uh, a couple of weeks earlier. They could have probably run Gibbons out of the building but turned it over twice uh, on the opposite side of midfield and on their first couple of drives. Um I think the difference with central is they, I don't want to say they play perfect because they've had, you know, like the Columbus game was obviously a scare um, where they didn't quite put them away, but they, like you said, they come up in the end and um, you know, their offense is, like I said, humming and I, their defense for all their, their flaws and their weaknesses and their inconsistencies. When you've got a guy like Ruben Bain, who is, probably the best player in South Florida this year. And like you said, seems to come up in the clutch in every game when they need it. I'm not picking against Central. I, I, all year long, I mean, they are – if they win this game, like like I said with Shaman, if Shaman beats, beats Gorman, someone's going to give him a national championship the same, I think, is true for Central this weekend. Yeah, well, they're one and two by uh, High School Football America. That's one poll that already yeah. took the lead on that and said those are the two <laughs> best and let's see yeah. if they can – let's see if they can settle it. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. And what and what a job too by, uh, you know, going back to the story that uh, that that we did back in in the preview. Two first year coaches who yeah. had been with the had been with the program, but taking over the program in each case with Jude Joseph at Central and Mike Smith over at Heritage. So something to be said about that, getting their teams to the point where mm -hmm. they could at least play this mega matchup for the state title. All right, well, that wraps it up for this episode of Title Town South Florida. We appreciate you guys joining us as always. And remember, once again, if you want to either watch this, you can find it at MiamiHerald.com. If you're listening to it as a pod, remember, you're not going to be able to see the highlights on, on the pod, but you can always listen to us, and we appreciate it. And we will have another episode coming for you. We're about we're going to take a break during the holidays soon, but we are going to have a, a bit of a signing day wrap-up at some point, whether next week or beyond that. But for David Wilson, I'm Andre Fernandez. We thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy the state championship. Program.